And with that, that's uh, Jay's take on The Last of Us Part 2. Hello and welcome. My name is Alice Gonzalez. And today is my good old friend, Jay E. Man, that's that's all the, the pre-show is going to be, 15 minutes of me just talking about The Last of Us Part 2. It was I, you know, I was waiting for for my turn to talk about Persona, but I feel like you just kind of went on your own thing, and I didn't want to add. I didn't want to add to it. It felt good. It's it's gonna be Jay's almost not spoiler review of uh, Last of Us Part Two in the. I kind of like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's. I, I kind of want to keep this little gem, mark it in my own notes for when I do play The Last of Us. I'm gonna laugh my ass off oh, listening smart. to. Yeah, it. that is actually smart, and uh, we definitely have to talk about it again when you do find and play the game. And please remember that we are not game devs. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm doing all right, Alex. I mean, I'm a little tired. I, I haven't been getting that much sleep since work started up again. And I'm waking up at like 7 in the morning. But I'm going to bed at like 3, 4 in the morning. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, when are you, when are you going to accept your new sleep schedule? I never did when I had a job before. So why start now? <laughs> Oh boy. And those, but though, wait, hold on. Where are we here? But those are not the bad sleep schedules that we are talking about today. Today we are creating something new, although it is related. Every week we are not game devs will create a new exciting video game idea that we have always wanted to play, but not have any knowledge or know how to create the wonderful experience that is video games. And today is my turn to present We Are Not Game Devs 110th IP. And where I want to go with this is I want to create a game where you're a character and you just moved out of college and you're trying to make it in a big city and you're bumming it on your friend's couch and you're going from friend to friend sleeping over. But when you fall asleep, you enter into a digital world, a world where you wake up in a sea of things. And these worlds are all going to be different. But the first one is just a sea of different things. And you're on a couch. And what you find out is you're in a literal sea of things, teddy bears, diapers, um, pots, pans, chairs, anything that you could imagine is in the sea of things. And it's literally creating waves. And you find out that you have to surf on the couch that you're sleeping on. And this is going to be the game, couch surfing. And I want there to be different couches that have different characteristics. For instance, it's going to be different surfing on a sofa, surfing on a sofa, versus ripping and dipping on a love seat. Then there's going to be single recliners. And I want all these to have different characteristics that'll add to different tricks that you're going to be doing surfing in dreamlike states. All right. So before we get into the actual game, I have a story for this game. And all the right. purpose of what's going on. Um, I'm drawing inspiration from a show I know that you watched uh, and kind of like, I don't think you ever finished, but I love this show called Wolfred. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Elijah Wood. The show made me depressed. I think Jason Gann is the writer and the guy who plays Wolfred. Uh, but I want it to ha kind of have that feel when you're moving from friend's house to friend's house where you're Elijah Wood's character and he's kind of like timid. He's going through like a crisis because he just got a, this isn't Ryan from Wilfred, but your character in the game, he just got a college. So he doesn't know what to do. He can't make a life decision. So he's just going from couch to couch with friends that he knows. Right. And then probably just getting high with them, drinking and talking and then falling asleep. Mm -hmm. What you do when you get into these dreams and you're surfing on their couch and one of the levels I want you to be in a sleeping bag, by the way. It's like you like spiraling through like That's perfect. and shit. But and through yeah, the yeah. sea of this all the shit. But I want all the shit to be stuff that 
are important to the friend that you're living or not living, but staying at. And while you're surfing through all this stuff, maybe I don't know how we would do it. Maybe you're kind of like surfing through their stuff. And by doing that, you're surfing through their life. And maybe there's going to be certain important things that kind of fall out or are obstacles. Maybe, for instance, you sleep on your best friend's couch and he now has a wife and a kid. And like an obstacle would be like the child's really big teddy bear in a wave that you have to avoid. Yeah. And where all this stuff is going is essentially through these dream surfing uh, uh, dreams that you go through, you kind of discover something about the friend that you're staying over at that yeah. they, your friend is like really struggling with. And then on the last night that you stay on their couch, you kind of have like a the same thing that you do with all of your friends is just, you know, spoke or drink and just have uh, a conversation and then you kind of mentioned hey uh by the way i don't know if this applies to you at all but and then you just explain something that you found in this dream i don't know if it's going to be through like collectibles or maybe at the end of each stage each night that you stay there and different friends with varying levels of difficulty you would stay there more nights right and then you'll slowly learn more and more about what's bothering them in their life and then you kind of just bring it up on the last night that you're going to stay there before you move to the next friend's house and just be like maybe you should try this and then they do it and then like all of a sudden as you're going through these your friend's homes they're kind of like hey man this guy's like helping us out with some serious shit uh and like that's kind of like the story i like that yeah um yeah so Let's go with that story, and there's tons of reasons why you can switch from place to place after somebody else starts fixing their own life. So that's fine, from text messages to maybe interview opportunities. Now, I want to focus on the game part, which is the couch surfing. Yeah. I think we can take inspiration from tons and tons of different beaches and waves and different wave patterns, but I want to make it as dreamlike as possible. So I want you to be surfing on essentially things and stuff and have it. Maybe it's going to be some different particle effects going that would still make it fun and cool. I could see like the wave foam being like dust bunnies and fluffy things, waves being made out of different stuff. And I could see tricks going on different uh, couches. I think a long sectional can be like a long board. If you fall asleep for some reason, maybe like one friend only has a recliner that's going to handle tighter and uh, do different things. Whereas if you sleep, maybe like you said on a sleeping bag, that's going to be way tighter and faster, like a torpedo yeah, <laughs> as like you're moving around. Maybe. Yeah, like a bobsled. There you go. So it's going to be more like losing on yeah. water. I don't know how you're picturing this game to look, but in my mind, it kind of looks... Um, I don't know how else to put this, but Star Fox 64. Where That's so weird. I was thinking... For me, I'm drawing heavy inspiration from like... Imagine the art style of Catherine... But the amount of random shit like you'd find in Digimon where there's like it's the most abstract world we have where it's like you're going to see flying whales. You know, it's it's somebody's dreamscape. So it's going to be pieces of their life. I didn't mean like the the 3D polygonal stuff. I just meant the perspective where you're behind oh yeah, yeah okay if you're just talking about that yeah you're behind your character it's going to be third person you're going to be moving through 3d space for sure um i guess if you're going to ask like that way if you're talking about it that way star fox is moving through space so it's so it's going to be more akin to that than being kind of grounded although you will be but uh, again i don't want to be anchored to what's going to happen in real life so it like it's fine to me. I think if you were to go and start surfing upwards, in fact, I wouldn't mind it if there was certain portions to demonstrate somebody's dreamscape and to show what their personality or life is like that. We have these moments where the character pulls off really crazy tricks, almost like you see in Sonic. Yeah. 
where it pans out and shows them going really fast and doing something athletic and then giving you back control. So then it pans back in yeah. and you can... Um, you know what I think is a better comparison on how I feel this game is going to look in terms of perspective and just like what you said, where it zooms out and then zooms back in and like kind of has like mm-hmm. different angles is a game that I still, I don't think you've played, but uh, Saranara Wild Hearts. No, I almost had, I had the opportunity like three times. Yeah, uh, where th- it's exactly what you said. It's it's usually behind them and then sometimes you get a side profile and then sometimes it goes crazy and it's like different cuts of different areas, you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of more yeah. like a movie like that. But I can imagine it kind of being something like Serenara Ser- uh, Wild Hearts in terms of how the game moves. Uh, in terms of like how the waves work, I'm going back to Star Fox 64, and this is a really deep cut for anyone who hasn't played 64, Star Fox 64, you're not going to understand what I mean. But there was that level where it's like all lava, and then there's the the fire coming out of the lava and like um, coming towards you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, do you remember this level? No, I didn't. I didn't get to play Star Fox sixty four. Oh, what? Oh, I, I don't uh, know why I assumed that you I, did. Well, like, there's lava that's coming out of the lava, like, and you could like go underneath it and above it. But this one, since it's waves, it's kind of like going to be like that, where you could, the waves are going. I don't know how to describe it and like see it visually, but like if you had the map in front of you, you'll see waves going up and then you would take the couch and that's when you could get up on the screen yeah and you could have a different elevation change i like that um i also want there to be different events uh for instance it one of them's gonna have to have a pet and that pet's gonna be heavily featured maybe that'll cause waves or splashes you know or become an antagonist or just like something in the background almost like uh how you would do in a super smash brothers battle you know where there's a little bit of stage interference as you're Mm. going through I'm thinking specifically uh, the Pokey Floats level. So they're just going to be the, like you mentioned, like flying whales and shit. So I yeah. imagine like maybe if they have a cat, it's just a cat flying in the sky and it's just gigantic. Yeah, where it's not malevolent or anything, but it's just part of the whole mystique of the character. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm liking where this is going. How do you feel about like the different lineups and the different stuff you're going to sleep on? I think even we could do different stuff to throw the player off where maybe one time there's like a cat nap on an, on like a chair and then it's a really fast level where they're maybe on a chair and it feels like, I know we're doing a lot of video game references, but you can't really describe abstract surfing here without describing abstract surfing. Uh, Mario 64 <laughs> where he's oh, on um, surfing on the turtle yeah. shell on the lava. Yeah. That would be like how a chair that, feels. It's like, it's like a computer chair. So it's on wheels. And so it's you just yeah, there you go on a computer chair, like through like, Maybe an office space where your friend works or something. You know what I mean? Um, another idea I had is maybe one night if you you and your friend drank too much the night before, you just fall asleep on like, I, I, I don't know, something weird that you would fall asleep when you're just drunk one night. Like like carpet? Yeah. Or, um, a rug? Or like on, you know, on like I, your table or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so you you have something different to serve or a dog bed yeah yeah or like i don't know what i wish we could implement it's very unique but it brings up a story we both know where in college where the college we both attended people would get drunk and fall asleep on a heated sofa and it was the most <laughs> hilarious thing ever because they turn it on because they were cold but they didn't realize it continually heats instead of stays at a certain temperature. So in about an hour and a half or so, as the rest of us were drinking, you'd hear, ah, and you'd look up and they would be burnt, <laughs> and they would be slightly burnt, but very drunk still and not understanding what's going on. Yeah. Maybe one is I'm, maybe a heated blanket. That's more common to people. Yeah. I, I was also and thinking it's like a fire level falling asleep on like a beer pong table. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and it could like fold up maybe. Um, oh yeah. It folds or, uh, yeah, I could see that happening. Uh, what else? And this would be a level that would be really cool if you were surfing on a beer pong table and the waves were made out of red cups and ping pong balls. Yeah. And just part of it, beer, empty beer cans and yeah. It's like the dude who never stopped partying, I guess. So 
already here, I feel like this game is going to be more of an experience and less score chasing. Um, I do want there to be. Yeah, what are you doing? Some are, are you. Is it going to be you're just trying to get to the end of the level? I think okay. uh, there could be maybe. Are you like collecting little dots like shiny? So dots this is what I kind of like... wanted to do. I I kind of want there to be like. I don't know why I can't get this out of my head, but I like a little absinthe fairy, like a green little fairy that's in the game that like your character like mumbles to himself the first time you collect one. Like, what the fuck is this? And then it just goes on from there. Hmm. And maybe the absinthe fairy will have its own dialogue. But I think there should be some other kind of collectible too, some kind of trophy that maybe. Uh, oh, so that thing is like the the bunny in Mario or like. Yeah. Like the. Yeah. um just like the one the collectible in the map that is on every single map there's one of it and it's like kind of hidden mm-hmm. somewhere and if you act if on this game if you go up on a wave at a certain point you could get this particular collectible definitely and i want there to be a collectible that's unique to each level but each level has it and i'm thinking this one's gonna have to be something that's representative of it's going to be a gold statue that's representative of maybe that level. And maybe it's going to be that icon for when you want to do a level select. And uh, what we'll do with that is maybe, you know, the cat level is going to have a golden cat. Um, the beer pong level is going to have like a golden cup with a beer pong ball going in. Maybe instead it could uh, be like five different golden objects. Like maybe, maybe it's this, all the objects that, uh, populate each map Mm -hmm. those are the there's one of each item that's in those waves that's golden that you could collect throughout oh that's so much better yeah 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 no yeah it's way better in the waves but as golden collectibles hidden somewhere in the map and then one golden green or one uh green absinthe fairy or whatever okay so what if we have this What if the absinthe fairy or it's going to be it's going to be a green fairy or I mean, Navi, if you're doing PG now that I think about it and it's it's going to sit there and if you you want to go. Yeah. And it's good. It's going to explain to you that you're in a dream world and that you have to get through it and there is no stopping or else you'll be stuck in a coma based on whatever you drink. And let's make this fairy look like a middle aged balding guy in like his boxers, you know, and he has a shirt, but it doesn't go completely over his gut. And he's a little hairy on his back and his, he's not going to, he's going to look just like he doesn't have it together. Okay. Is he going to be like shiny? He's going to be your, or is he going to look like fairly odd parent fairies where they're just like people with wings? Yeah. He's going to be a person with wings and he's going to tell you about the other, like the other fairies that are maybe green or different or yeah, that you can collect that are hidden. I think you're just going to need another voice in this, in this dream just to like give a little bit of commentary to what's going on on top of your main character. But do you, I I just feel like there's got to be something unless because your main character is not going to be so intuitive that he's gonna be like of course i have to surf upwards through this spiral (laughs) you know like he's not gonna understand what's going on story wise i could see it something like you just got to call it out of college right and maybe we could even have it where you've been staying with your parents for like five years or something and so all your friends kind of already have their lives together but you're just this uh kid that just got out of college and then didn't know what to do so they went back and lived with their parents for five years and now your parents kind of just forced you out to get out there right uh and that's why you kind of went from place to place but as you did that maybe the first friend that you stay over at you you do something i don't know what it is but this something kind of triggers maybe you uh help your friend catch your friend from like a really big fall or something and then you get knocked out and then this fairy comes to you and kind of like the contract in persona and then you kind of go into this contract and then from there on that's when you that's why you have these dreams and that's why this fairy comes and talks to you yeah and 
help you on your journey to find yourself and give your life meaning or whatever. And yeah, and I want it to be a, just a very normal looking fairy, just so when the main character is like, I thought you're supposed to be mythical. And he's like, there's nothing mythical about your life. Why would I be any different? Yeah. Yeah, like there's nothing special here. Just moving on. And like I guess maybe the thing is, is maybe part of the contract is you got to help out your friends and then they'll phrase it like, we'll help you get your life together. But throughout this process, what they're really doing is making your character discover that after helping all your friends that you could actually do something with your life and then you'd go out and do something without the fairy's help or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, generic story, or, but I maybe mean, or like do. that where this where after he figures out what's going on with him, the fairy appears, and the fairy doesn't look all mismanaged and overweight. It looks clean shaven, and you find out that he was like, "I wasn't, a, I was your conscience all along." You just finally started listening to me, mm. something like that. And then that's where, yeah. So all of a sudden, Jiminy Cricket's healthy and ready to go. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, what do you think about after you beat the main story, kind of having like a time trial mode with other unlockables in there, you know? And I also want there to be some kind of control where there's like, if you're in the air, you can press like one of the directional buttons to do a trick. I want it to be fun as you're going through. Yeah. Uh, we got to talk about the controls of the surfing here. I mean, in terms of how the surfing controls... Yeah, I like the idea that everything that you sleep on, whatever it is, for each friend's place that you go, and you don't necessarily even sleep on the same thing every night. Um, but they're all going to control different. Like you, I like the idea that a love seat is more like a short board where you like weave down and go back up really fast, right? Um, yeah. And then the the couch would be more of like a like you said a long board, so it moves a lot smoother. Um, how I feel like it would work maybe is kind of like a 3D in order to make it fun is like a 3D, um, uh, Ollie Ollie, or like you mentioned before, Sonic the Hedgehog, but not the 3D Sonic the Hedgehog because the Sonic Hedgehog, uh, 3D games are very linear in the maps. But if you ever played a 2D Sonic game, there is like in one, one map, you could finish that map in like two dozen different ways. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many bit different paths that you could take. So maybe our the structure of our game is like that, where there's multiple paths you could take. And each one, there's like, in each path, you have to do more complicated things to get to different levels of it. You know what I mean? Like if you want to get on the higher mm -hmm. levels, you'd, you're going to have to pull off maybe the up directional trick that gives you like just a little bit more range. I like that. Yeah. So it, it, it rewards players for trying a little bit harder here and gives them another way to, to experience. Level. Yeah. And I kind of imagine it look like when you start, you start going and like, there's like, at first the choices are kind of easy where it's just like two paths, you pick left or right. And then the next one's like three paths where you go left, but kind of up right, but kind of down or straight and that's just straight right and like mm -hmm. maybe your fairy could help you where it's like hey i kind of think you should go this way or this way depending on what you want like he'll give you hints to where collectibles are you know what i mean um but nothing like yeah he's like he won't say like, like this way is easier or something like that he'll say oh i think there's something this way if you want to go down this path yeah, I, I see that. I smell a fairy up there yeah. or something. And then you could like Way ahead. fall through the cracks. If you don't make a particular jump, you'll fall down to a different path. You know what I mean? Like just like, yeah, just like Sonic the Hedgehog, um, the 2D games at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, cool, this cool, is cool. all behind the character, I imagine, in, in a more 3D open space. So it's going to be very confusing to players when they play this game for the first time because I don't know very many games that look like that. Uh, mm -hmm. but I think eventually you will get the hang of it. If, of course, the first few games will be a lot easier. Um, and then depending on whatever couch that you're on or not couch, but sleeping on whatever it is. Yeah. The maps could look completely different. And also 
it just feels so, different to move. Yeah. I'm thinking one of them is going to be a palace like representation in the sense that I very artistic, maybe a friend who has their life together a little too much where maybe halfway through the level it gets burst down through childlike stuff but it'll start with like you know maybe this guy did really well applied himself uh got a very good marketable degree made it out of school got married and already has a house and stuff right so you're going to be going through what's like a museum at versailles but then all of a sudden slowly transition into a wild wacky toy story Mm -hmm. kind of thing um my idea for that particular level is that he'll have a bed for you to sleep on in like a guest room right and so this is the this is part of the, the part of the game where you get to have like just a mattress that you kind of surf the mattress on. And then I feel like this map in particular, you'll go, be going down like staircases and like you'll be like going through a more realistic looking area. And then the waves will still mm-hmm. be there, but it'll be more like a river. And maybe there are some more river like. Or what if it's like a river that empties out into a child, like an ocean of child's toys and Legos. Yeah. And a bunch of just stuff. And maybe that like the whole thing is the child's life is imposing on your friend's life and they're trying to find balance. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, I totally see that like a, like a river or what's almost like you're surfing a water slide, you know, so to say, but it's a real, it's like, instead of water slides, like hallways and stairs. I just had an idea how to finish the game. All right. At the very Late on end me. of the game, you surf through your own traumas and issues. And Oh yeah, okay. In this particular one, I feel like this will be kind of like how rhythm games have that song that's like it's like a 9-minute song, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I imagine this to be like <laughs> you just had so much trauma. Yeah. Like there's just so much surfing it's, to do. Because the, the other times you just have one, you're staying at your friend's house for multiple nights. And so it's split up into multiple stages. This one's gonna be this one giant epic ride that lasts up to let's say like six minutes. It's a six minute sequence. It's almost I almost want it to be then one of those levels that when you beat it, you just keep surfing and the credits come oh, up and you're kind of playing yeah. while the credits scroll. Kind of like, uh, like it's that kind Mario, of level. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, I also like the idea where instead of this just being crazy different paths you could take with different tricks and like different uh, areas you could go to and some are like hidden cool little areas that have different like a trippier uh, environment. Because I can imagine that there's the really hard to get to areas in your friend's dream states. And then when you get there, it's just crazy looking. Like that's like the, where the Oh, it's like we could call that maybe where it gets like you're entering to the deepest part of the subconscious mind. Right. And then that's where all the crazy shit happens, but it's really hard to get there, you know? Um, I, I, yeah, I yeah. want your dream that like the six minute sequence to be more like an Uncharted meets Disneyland ride vibe where it's like pirates of the caribbean where you're it's more linear than your friends dreams but the stuff that's happening are super crazy and you have like things coming up in your face kind of like uh uh that vr game by the until dawn guys uh oh um last ride yeah something like that. it ride something all i'm saying is that it should be more like an on rails experience you could still have some choices like left right up down or whatever but i want it to be more linear and then there's going to be parts where you just go into an open like open space and it's just like a spectacular moment that like does that's like the moment of truth where you kind of figure whatever the purpose of this game is and then you go on this crazy ride for like two more minutes you know what i mean like i feel yeah, like the end yeah, okay. should just be one epic ride through yeah. yeah and for some reason this is going to be like a part where he's now confidently able to couch surf where like he's like he has a stance and it looks like he's actually surfing right and then maybe in this particular dream you'll go from you go through different kinds of sleeping me- mechanisms while you're going through this particular dream. You know what I mean? Like you'll switch couches throughout this dream. Okay, yeah. Like for some reason, maybe you go off a waterfall and then there's like this crazy scene where you're just going through and then there's like imagery coming down this giant dark cave and then you land into like a 
mattress or something and then the mattress goes turns off a corner too quick and then you start falling and then you land in like a sleeping bag or something you know what i mean so you just that's really cool yeah yeah different. no i think that's awesome way to like do it where you keep tumbling and then another like uh furniture catches you and then it keeps going from there all right so at this point, the music in this game has to be dependent on the level because there's going to be tons of sound effects to go along with it. If you're going through the guest house and then hitting the toy ocean, you know, and doing all that and, go, and going through like the guest bedroom and the nice house, that's going to have like different maybe classical music entering into what's going to be more crazy childlike music. Yeah. Whereas um, I'm thinking if it's the beer pong level, you're going to have more guitar riffs and maybe like, or even like a punk song, you know, where it's more reminiscent of like younger days or, and then, so it's definitely going to vary on level to level and have multiple genres. What do you think? Yeah. I think every level is going to have a different sounding song dependent on the person that they're, dreaming through you know what i mean um yeah and then i also think that the only time when there's going to be a single line that's similar in terms of the music is i want to say every after every stage you and your friend have like a talk kind of like the end of the wilford episodes where you guys are just smoking drinking and you guys are just talking and chatting and then that's where the that's where kind of the story builds where at first you guys just talk about stuff you did in college and stuff that you did at this one party and then eventually the conversation gets more and more serious and eventually you solve whatever that serious conversation's problem was you know what i mean and during these times i just think that there should be like a, a soundtrack that goes behind it or that's a kind of, common theme yeah. That's uh, okay. I like that. We'll call it the hero's theme. Right. So pricing here, based on the art style and everything, this feels like if we have enough levels, like a $60 game, right? I mean, it could be $40 at an awkward price point if you want to come off because I know it's new. It's very different. Yeah. But that those are the two I'm thinking. I imagine it could be a $40 or $50 game. Even if we have a bunch of levels and stuff, I don't think that... It, it's going to be expensive to render those waves yeah. that are just full of stuff. <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> you I know, think and to do those dream sequences. $49.99 isn't a bad price. It's a weird price, but I feel like it's... it's Technically, we'll it's get a, nod. a lot of stuff happening on the screen, but it's not like there's a crazy story going on. It's not like the 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 character models are like super realistic because i imagine this to kind of look like art style wise kind of look like um i guess yeah like you said catherine or like persona where it's more yeah, like I'm aiming for anime. catherine persona no more heroes yeah, yeah. it's not going to be hyper realistic because i just don't think that would lend itself well to the abstract levels we're going to be having in here. Right. Like I, I kind of imagine it to look like, or maybe we could take even a weird art direction where it kind of looks like those movies, like, uh, like Kubo, Coraline, uh, like the claymation look, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I, there's another movie. Uh, I don't want to do the claymation. Not look. the claymation. Look. It just makes it like, or, and I don't want it to be stop motion or anything. No, no, not just cause I feel like, or anything like that, but I just like, I guess in my head, I can't separate claymation like from it not being smooth. Mm. Well, like Kubo yeah, is just because like, clay, you know, Kubo's pretty choppy as well, but yeah. And the, the whole part of surfing is smoothness mm. and I want it to feel good. So I won't sacrifice feel for art, I guess, in this yeah. one, in the sense that I think that a better art style could be uh, served for it. Well, Jay, it's time to take out your timer because we're going to name this game. This one's going to be easy. You think so? It's already at the tip of your tongues, listeners. Is oh, it? yes. All right, go. Couch surfer. Couch surfing. I can... all. Yeah, that's the other one. Yep. I was thinking that could be the other one. I was either I'm thinking, cool with couch surfing too. I, I was thinking couch surfing or like dream surfing or 
I I kind of want to make it couch surfing and then have the box art be trippy. Isn't there isn't there a, a, a term for a friend that just goes from couch to couch, like a friend's couch to another friend's couch? That's called couch surfing. Oh, yeah, it's couch surfing. Okay, yeah, couch surfing. Thirty one seconds, kind of, sort of. We got it before. Oh right. You know what I mean. Yeah. Now that we have a complete game here, who would you assign to make couch surfing the best? I'm going to have you go for the first one here. Easy Insomniac. Hmm. Interesting choice. Uh, yeah, the other one I could do if I'm firing from the hip, I'm going pow, pow, is Atlas. Um, they also do a bunch of weird stuff. Uh, I would just be in a meeting and be like, you know all those persona enemies? Okay, well, I'm going to give you different levels and you make persona things out of those levels and then you just fill them as part of the waves. Uh, I got one for you. Uh, Platinum games. Specifically for their work on Nier Automata. Uh, Just because Nier Automata had these weird... Have you played Nier? I don't think you have. No, not yet. I haven't. It's on my list. It mixes multiple genres, and one of those genres is that third. It's it's like Galaga. You know what I mean? Where the yeah, yeah, it's enemy um, ships come down. It's a shooter. Yeah, like a shoot 'em up, but yeah. a, a schwup. What is it called? Bullet hell. Bullet hell. That's what it is. It's not a bullet hell specifically, but there are moments where there's. Oh. Enemies coming towards you, and then you like kind of fly, kind of like Star Fox almost. Um, so I think, yeah, Near Automata or uh, uh, Platinum Games would do pretty good with that. All right, and then always uh, Hideo Kojima, yeah. great dream sequences, right? Right. I would also say Pic- Pixel Opus, uh, who's more recently known for Concrete Genie, um, but I'm pulling from more of their experience with Entwined, which didn't review well, but I really liked entwine i i mentioned this on the show before uh that entwine would be their pixel opus and their art style and the way they do things would be really really cool all right and for couch surfer the third person abstract surfing game where you surf from couch to couch and also solve life problems along the way for this game here jay what do you think would this be a game you'd want to play and is it fun yeah, depending on how it feels and how it looks in terms of the control of it, I think I would have a really good time unless it feels like I'm not in control, then I wouldn't probably finish it. But yeah, if it controls super well and I'm having a great time and it looks crazy and super like trippy looking with cool music, I think I would dig it. Yeah, same here. Um this would be a novel experience I'd like. Uh, right now, we're not really being served by anything like a skate or anything cool or grindy like that, Jet Set Radio. So I think this game would kind of fit in while also being a, a slice of life tale from a period where I don't think it's explored as much, kind of late 20s around there. We always get early, late teens, right? So that'd be really fun to kind of go back and see. And with that, our 110th IP has gone gold. We hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. You can write to at poundgames at gmail.com if you have anything to patch into the game we create today. Also, give us feedback. We are still learning how to make this show better, and your feedback really helps. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to back our ideas, please head over to patreon.com slash wearenotgamedevs. Patrons receive episodes two days early and an extra podcast at the beginning which you caught the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's patreon.com slash we are not game devs. If you liked our show, why not subscribe and give us all the stars on Apple podcasts, Google play store, Spotify, YouTube, and more. And if they ask for a review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review couch surfing. Are we doing ing or or, or, or? ing? Ing. The video game we just created. Thank you for joining us today. We will be back next Friday with another new IP. Again, my name is Alex Gonzalez. And I'm Jay Yee. 
Thank you, and please remember that we are not game devs. Yay! Woo! This is where the audience claps. Fun time. Yeah, I like it. Now I know why I people like clap. What? I said now I know why people clap. I like it. <laughs>